This was kind of big news the other day. I was actually surprised more places didn't cover it, but it might get picked up later. Uh, Scarlett Johansson is now the highest grossing actor of all time. Uh, her movies are a cumulative range of $440 million a movie. That is a, a lot of a lot of money for each movie, uh, which is funny because uh, up there on the top of the list when they talk about cumulative totals ahead of her are Robert Downey Jr. and Samuel L. Jackson, uh, notably all Marvel actors, yeah. of course. That's that's the rub here, right, is that Marvel gets... Uh, it's not necessarily just them, it's it's Marvel. That's the highest grossing of all time. But it speaks a lot to like the, the power of being a woman in Hollywood if you're actually a draw, right? A lot of what we talk about when we talk about women in Hollywood these days is actresses that are that are younger but less established and they're talking about equity and they're talking about identity politics and they're talking about getting the same treatment as men scarlett johansson didn't really need to do that she worked very hard from a young age i do have critiques of her now having a problem with being sexualized given that she made her 440 million dollars a movie uh rate uh, you know by being sexualized in a lot of roles but not in all of them certainly not in all of them and I think it says something because the conversation that I see most around females, it's like this article uh, about Priyanka Chopra uh, in, the, in Citadel with Richard Madden talking about pay parity. I don't think Scarlett Johansson wants pay parity. I don't. She wants pay superiority. She wants superior. Yes, she wants pay her supremacy. No, I think that I don't think that she wants that at all. I think that the the ability to complain about it is far more valuable. She. It's not like she has. It's not like she's hurting for money. No. It's not like getting more money is going to make her life materially better. You know. It's literally just going to be like, oh well, now I can say that I got paid. And what's more valuable, something to bitch about every time you put out a movie and people are going to pat you on the head about, or actually getting the money, which you literally will never notice because of how much money you make. And uh, the, the beauty of critical theory when it applies to this stuff is there will always be something to complain there's about. There's always something to complain <laughs> there's, about. The, there's always a way to uh, uh, make uh, to point out a disparity and then blame that on 100%. some type of identity politics rather than taking into account. It is far more yeah. valuable for a woman in Hollywood to make 10%, yeah. 20% less than their male counterparts just because of the fact, like I said, if they're if they're top tier, yeah. the amount of money that they're that they're not making, they will never notice. There is no way that you're going to tell me that if if Scarlett Johansson or whatever made an additional ten million dollars, yeah. that her life or any of their lives is going to be material better, materially better. It will not be. I like the idea that her like her agent comes to her. He's like, I think we could get like another five million on this. She's like, no. Don't do it. I like they all like they offer her pay parity with like her male co-stars. She's like, I'll take the pay cut. Yeah. Like so that she can then go back and complain about it later. That would be de I'd actually respect it. I mean, it's evil and it's selling the country down the river because you're 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 tearing the industry down, you're tearing the country down with your identity politics. Yeah. But at least it's a very smart business decision. I can always respect a, a ruthless capitalist. It's just a different type of capital yeah, that, I mean, she's yeah. ca that she's putting it kind catching of in on. levels out for like young mm -hmm. actresses because what you don't get paid compared to a more established male co-star you're going to make in a skincare deal or yeah. Uh, yeah, any of your brand deals or you know having a partnership with a fashion brand that you like wear their their clothes yeah. the all guys of these get, different guys avenues that get, guys of get... monetizing your name like a perfume line yeah. makeup all of this different stuff uh, hair care like there is countless ways to monetize your fame that aren't just the paycheck you get off of acting. And there's guys that get that, but there's just but there's far less of them. I mean, there's less possibilities because yeah. like, what is is Hugh Jackman going to have a skin car, skincare line? Like, I, don't, I bet you, I bet you has something. I bet I I bet you at the very least he's promoted hair care. So Probably I, in another country. Even hair care, like hair care and stuff like that, is popular for for male celebrities to, to yeah. promote and stuff like that. You can do that at any age. Plus, when you get old, you get to have like the the AARP ads or whatever Tom Selleck's always. <laughs> Reverse doing. mortgages. Reverse yeah. Mortgages. yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, those, are, those are always great. It's like, you know, their agents like, look, you haven't been working in a few years, but I can get you. I got the business for you. Tom Selleck's still working. He's still making blue bloods. He's mm -hmm. like, he's still working full time. Leave some work for the rest of them, Tom. Like, there's got to be more unknown actors. Like, what's Tony Danza doing these days?
Uh, the reverse mortgage is uh, uh, Henry Winkler now. Uh, yeah, no, yeah. He's still working too. Yeah, he, he works plenty. He's a producer too. Mm-hmm. Henry Wink- Winkler works a lot. Mm-hmm. Uh, he was the you know he was the he played the dad of the two brothers on Royal Pains. Yes, is uh he was in Black Adam. Yes. Oh yeah, he was, wasn't he? Oh yeah, it was like a cameo yeah. though. He's like he's like it's like a cell phone shot. But it says that she's average. She, so her films average out to about four hundred and forty million dollars a movie. But the thing is, like Robert Downey Jr. is up there too. But I've she's actually probably when you really think about it, her and Samuel L. Jackson are better known for roles outside Marvel than Robert Downey Jr. is now. Mm-hmm. Like Robert Downey Jr. When you think of him, yeah, you might think of Tropic Thunder. You think of Sherlock Holmes, I guess, a little bit. Yeah. Like some people think of Sherlock Holmes, but for the most part, they're thinking of Iron Man. Chaplin. Yeah, like Scarlet, like Samuel L. Jackson. When you think Star about Wars, it, Star Wars, man. Uh, but also number five was Tom Hanks, and he doesn't do any superhero anything. So that kind of speaks to the power of his uh, his his like box office draw, right? Unless you count Elvis as a superhero. Is, does, that, does Elvis count as a superhero? <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yeah, number three was Scarlett Johansson. Number four was Tom Hanks, and number five was Tom Cruise. So there you go. No superheroes in anyone that one. Oh really? Did, I thought it said that it was. Chris Hemsworth in fifth. The, the, that's probably the per movie one, not the total gross one. Oh, so okay. Then, and, then uh, it was Chris Pratt and Chris Evans. So, All the Chris's uh, were in Harrison there. Harrison Ford got knocked out of both of these. Yep. Huh? He yep. was got number one for like one. 20 years. So Priyanka Chopra, she had, the, the other part of this was Priyanka Chopra was talking about how she's receiving pay parody. She's in an upcoming show from the Russo brothers, ironically enough, from Marvel fame doing Captain America and obviously Avengers Endgame. Uh, she's getting pay parody with Richard Madden on that show. Richard Madden, also a Marvel actor. He was in The Eternals. He's just discount Sebastian Stan anyways, in a lot of ways. Uh, and I don't, I wonder why she talks about it like this because she starred in a show called Quantico for four years or four seasons on ABC where I don't think as the star of the show, your face is on all the posters. I remember it being one of the first examples of Hollywood being like, it's the first Indian born actress or Indian actress with a star role on a television show. It was a very early example of like woke identity politics and marketing. I just saw a headline that was like, so-and-so is the first black woman to win two Oscars. Yeah, I saw that too. Who cares? Nobody cares. <laughs> but there's like somebody there like no. She won an Oscar. <laughs> like somebody's like uh, like it's the first person to win four Oscars on on years that uh, end in an odd number and, and this this and that. It's gonna be it's gonna be like that forever. So she says I've been working in the entertainment industry, guys. This is Priyanka Chopper now. This is her talking about pay parity for Citadel. She says I've been working in the entertainment industry now for 22 years and I have done about 70 plus features. She said I've done two TV shows, but when I did Citadel, it was the first time in my career that I had pay parody with my male co-actor the first time in 22 years and i wonder that uh like did that just happen she also talks about how it's because there's female producers on the show they care more about equity another reason to start wondering if maybe we should start introducing like like female director and male director awards because male men and women direct oh. differently uh and these people love dividing people up into identity poly into like uh, immutable characteristics anyway she said that this is because it took a female yep. executive at yep. amazon yep. jennifer salke yep. to make it happen yeah of course it was it's stunning and brave mary so it's stunning it and feels brave. it feels better to be artificially propped up because i have a vagina yes Yes. Actually. Uh, um, so so I want to know. She was the lead on on Quantico. Did she get pay parity with her males that were not the stars of those shows? Uh, also, Anjanou Ellis was on that. Anjanou Ellis was a big name. Is, I mean, is for TV a bigger name actress. Did she get pay parity with her even though she was the star and Anjanou Ellis Didn't wasn't? did Priyanka Chopra also specifically talk about Bollywood's yeah. pay disparity issues? Yep. She's done that as well. I mean, maybe you could make an argument there. Yeah. Uh, this is a completely different culture on the other side of the world that has much different views about, you know, the treatment of women, and in a lot of ways, they're subjugated there. I wonder what but... she made in ba- <laughs> when she was in Baywatch with The Rock and Zac Efron. She's obviously not making Rock money, mm-hmm. but is she making closer to Zac Efron money? Why? Why assume malice? Where there are so many other explanations, because ma- every like, time, like Phil said, malice is easier to pro- to profitize when you make comments about it. Yeah, you know, it's a lot easier to be able to go onto these podcasts and these platforms and on your social media and complain about it. Even though I would actually argue that at this pay level, at this level of success, they're strong enough business people that they know the reason for these pay disparities. They're just lying. Yeah. 
They're just lying. Ugh, this, this other quote of hers is awful. She said, I feel like in America, we talk about diversity and inclusion. We're always talking about what diversity looks like and how everyone should be seen. But true global diversity also matters. Everyone also needs to be heard. It's not just about the way you look in entertainment. Diversity is about how you sound, the words that come out of your mouth, the language that you use. How, how She literally just said nothing at all. She just said globalism. Yes. Global diversity, like that doesn't make any sense because like if you're talking about the whole globe, like boy, it's it's diverse already. The whole it's planet. by definition, by definition always going to be diverse. All, yeah, but her like, idea you're about, of like, people true from space? true <laughs> global diversity is when specifically Westerners have to watch entertainment from every other culture, and then those cultures stay insular. True global diversity. Yeah, but is we Indians she gets to tell people are to going do. to keep on watching Bollywood stuff, and they don't have any obligation to be you know, watching Western entertainment. I mean, I don't know. We, we, we export do. a lot of entertainment. Yes, we export no. a lot of entertainment, but it's only the Westerners that are given a moral imperative yes. to watch the entertainment from other cultures, to accept other cultures and celebrate other cultures. I don't think anyone is talking about, you know, how Chinese people need to watch more Western entertainment. Yeah. No one is talking about that. No one is saying, well, you know. Well, that's because the why? default is they assume, we assume they do anyways. I, th I think Americans assume that they watch our entertainment anyways. There because is, ours is the best, yeah. but I no mean, one's There's a lot of either. people that would argue that these days. There's a, there's a lot of people that say that's not even necessarily true anymore. The, um, the fact is Hollywood invented Hollywood. Yeah. Like that's, yes, like we, we do have the highest quality entertainment here in the West, but it's only the Westerners, the Western viewers that uh, have been, saddled with this moral imperative to appreciate other cultures exports yeah. other cultures are not required to appreciate western exports yeah well if anything that ours is up, up for critique more than yes. those are yeah, yeah far more um, we're our exports are subject to criticism based on also their insular cultural standards yeah maybe because they don't make their media with the with the understanding that it's going to be exported and we do now like we make our media knowing that it's going to be exported to I the rest of the world i think that's like being that's like taking a, a detrimental effect yeah. on on it's our entertainment our globalist i mean that isn't that yeah. just our the the country's capitalist approach to it though they want to reach as many people as possible because as many pockets as you can possibly get money out of it's not even necessarily it's, if anything it's homogenized our entertainment in a lot of ways because we have to work the, our hardest to both mm -hmm. make what they want to make progress or uh, push the message they want to push without offending too many groups like you can make all of the all of the movies you want with all of the diversity all of the equity all of the inclusion all of the whatever storylines you want and you still have to censor it for china still have to censor it for uh where else saudis, saudis. Yeah. uh russia does russia's not buying that crap like <laughs> I mean, june doesn't even exist in saudi arabia yeah. they don't even have that to, month anymore if you go to that much effort to globalize the themes of western entertainment exports then eventually you. westerners aren't going to like the product anymore and the effort to make more money off of it by throwing it to the rest of the globe is not going to work yeah eventually some of these companies will just have to be like we are we are taking a stand it's not even taking a stand against like woke or unwoke it's like we are going to make entertainment specifically for americans i guess that's like great american family mm -hmm. Right, like uh, we're making entertainment that is for a uniquely American audience. If other people want to watch it, they can, but we're not going to pander to your needs or your wants. Terminalist. Yes. Uh, See, I love a good, uh, you know, American military propaganda show. I love it. <laughs> I love, I love the pushing of the endless wars, even if I know the endless wars are bad. Right? Like, it's just like I love cop shows. I love cop shows. Are they a fairy tale of what the actual police state is like? Absolutely. Yeah. Doesn't mean they're not fun to watch. I'm just so sick of people having the approved opinion trademark on everything and then acting like they're a revolutionary voice. They love it. They love like the like, rest of her so interview is her just saying mental health matters. <laughs> Diversity, equity, inclusion matters. It is like they get it down blah, blah, in their blah, brain. Blah. Oh, also, um, when I'm modeling, why do, why am I expected to be a size two? Like, stop complaining about everything. <laughs> do you, why do you think, why do you think that ah. is? Why, I mean, beyond like us who, who make this, who were kind of part of the problem because we talk about it. Yeah. Like, who are the people beyond us who talk about it and uh, our lovely audience who likes to hear us complain about it? Who the hell is like, I'm going to go read about this rich 
actress who's gorgeous complaining about everything? Who's digesting that for fun? No one. No one. No one. That's how I wonder, like, what? How do we, like, have this economy of, like, articles that just shuffle words around? It is, too. <laughs> A lot of it is For just ad shuffling. revenue. Like, how does it keep itself going? Who yeah. is clicking on these headlines anymore? I No, it's funny, too. Other if you than go us, to, obviously. No, if you go to, if you, if you use Yahoo, like the Yahoo News aggregator, there's, like, thousands of comments on this stuff from people. Like, thousands upon thousands of comments i'm like who like i guess it's people with email jobs i think just it's like, just, ah. it causes us so much existential dread like, to realize how many people there are there's seven like, there's we seven we were comments never supposed to know we, we definitely weren't there's seven comments in this one it says she's about the same size box office draw as peewee herman <laughs> maybe <laughs> that's why you weren't getting the big checks uh there's some people who seem to like the uh like the, both understand what off. uh uh, okay, these are poorly written, so we're not going to read those. But the point is, uh, maybe they're, maybe it's maybe it's troll farms. I like that idea. I like it better that Putin's just behind it. Like, let's just Russian blame Putin. bot farms. Let's just blame oh, Russian God. bots. Like, I'm fine with that. Let's go. That's that's a throwback. I'm down. <laughs> Russian bots. It's, it's Russian bots. So I can't wait till we move back into another paradigm where it's offensive to say that. Like, uh, everything that you, you like. You're rusophobe. The, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Like, remember during. Uh, Obama, when it was like, uh, the 1980s called, they'd like their foreign policy back. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, but yeah. here we are. Look, I'm, I'm down. Like, I, I just I can't wait I, for it to be offensive. It's also just annoying because these are actors who are in the peak of their success right now. Priyanka Chopra moved successfully from television into movies and then into streaming. Maybe she's taken a step back in that way, but she's gorgeous. She's married. She's got a good life, but they've always got something to complain about. It's crazy. Yep. They never do. good enough. Thanks for watching. Listen to full episodes of Pop Culture Crisis on Spotify. Keep up with us on social media and make sure you subscribe and ring that bell so you never miss the show. Bye, guys.